para os outros protegidos. Os outros protegidos são os outros que são os outros que são os outros que são os outros. Então, o Senhor não pode dizer, mas pela graça de Deus. Paul wrote this expression to show that divine grace was the reason for their being called to believe us. They were not called because God was pleased in something they had done. They were called because God loved them even though they did not deserve it. And so he accuses them of and are turning to a different gospel. The Galatians were turning to a different Not to a different words, to a different ways of thinking and of seeing God. The Galatians were thinking that the idea of ever earning their salvation by keeping the laws of Moses was still a gospel. Yeah. They were thinking their idea of earning their salvation by keeping the law of Moses was still a gospel. So he is telling them you are now turning to a different gospel. This gospel was now according to Moses. Even if a different gospel from the gospel of salvation by God's grace alone, which Paul taught. So, the Galatians were thinking deeply that their idea of earning their salvation by keeping the law of Moses was still a gospel. Even if a different gospel from the gospel of salvation by God's grace alone, which Paul taught. He tells them, which is really no gospel at all. That is not the spot. And you can't tell them that he is not against the law in chapter 5. He is not against the law. But you cannot see. So he says, which is not, or which is really not the spot. No, said Paul. It is not a different gospel. It is no gospel. Insisting that general believers must keep Jewish 
ceremonial laws, as well as believe in Christ for salvation. Refer to Acts chapter 15, verse 1 to 2, and verse 24. The Galatians believers here had one message from Paul salvation by grace. And another message from these teachers, salvation by grace, plus human effort, was now uh, coming unto them. The Galatians were as the truth was being shaken. And so he says that there is some people are going into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. The word Paul used to pervert means not to be able to make a slight change of direction, but a complete reversal. Galatian believers who are going from a gospel one of God doing to a God, one of God's doing to a gospel of believers strictly keeping ceremonial laws. Galatians 3 3 says, Are you so foolish after beginning with the Spirit? Are you now trying to attain your goal by human effort? Because that is what now they were starting to think, they were beginning to think is the best way. So what you see in verse 7, Paul uses the word alos for different. The word means different, but of the same kind. A wonderful biblical example of this word is in John 14, 6, where Jesus promises to send another counselor. That is called water. The Holy Spirit is not a terrorist, not of a completely different kind from Jesus, but alos of the same kind as Jesus. Though a different person, that is, they are born from God. An example of using a tree, a mango or a mango tree, is a terrace from a guava. That is, is a different or of a different kind. A guava tree and a mango tree are two different things, two different kinds of trees. One mango is a horse from another mango. That is a different, a different tree, but another fruit, but of the same kind. So the authorized version in verse 7 as which is not another, for the new international version which is really not was part of. Turn to verse 8, but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preached to you, let it be eternally condemned. Would you refuse to listen to a glorious angel preaching? Because here this guy says, even if an angel, but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one he preached to you, imagine an angel coming to preach, but if that angel is not preaching the truth, then there is a problem. Would you refuse to listen to a glorious angel preaching? If he taught contrary to the Bible teaching, never forget 2 Corinthians 11, 14, which says, And no wonder for Satan himself must write as an angel of light. So the angel himself of light, the devil tries to imitate him. He must write as an angel of light. How important it is to test all the preaching we do and all the preaching we hear by continually asking, does this truly agree with the Bible teaching? So he says, let him be eternally condemned. Paul speaks very strongly and does so twice in verse 8 and verse 9. Let him be eternally condemned. This shows us how serious a thing it is to teach what is not Bible truth. Those who do so will have God's grace on them. Matthew chapter 7, verse 22. Matthew 7, verse 22 and 23 it says. Men will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out devils and perform many miracles? Then I 
and it stands up to today. Not only to those who are lying to the Galatians. There are many false teachers lying to the Galatians of today, and they are a cast. The curse is spoken twice. That shows it was very deliberately intended. Paul is not speaking rashly. The curse includes everyone, angels, apostles, when he says we, that is Paul includes himself, and at the curse, if he teaches error. I want you to understand that teaching a wrong gospel is the devil's work, deserving God's curse. A false gospel is so sinful because, one, it belittles the glory of Christ. So Paul knew his previous law keeping and circumcision had not made him a Christian. He knew he was a Christian only because of Jesus Christ. Only union with Christ alone makes a person a Christian. Any other teaching takes away from Christ's work. It determines us from him who has called us. It deceives the hearers. If you teach people a way that does not go to heaven, you have taught them the way to hell. What would be more sinful than that? So the first gospel is something different from what the apostles thought. The importance of the preacher does not make his sermon truthful. The truthfulness of his sermon makes the preacher's role model, role impossible. Any teaching or practice not clearly taught in the epistles is not truly the gospel. And also any teaching that the grace of God is not enough for our salvation is not a gospel. Believers are saved by grace. That is what we are talking in Ephesians, where Ephesians are true. Verse 8, he says, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not by baptism, not by communion, not by confession, not by good works, not by last rites, not mass of the dead or empty gates. It is only through grace. The question is, you brought the true gospel. Can you find all your beliefs and practices not in their places? But in all this, you need to understand grace. Paul uses the word for grace seven times in this letter. And the word occurs 156 times in the whole New Testament. Obviously, it is an important word. The Old Testament has different words for God's favor and His loving kindness. Ideas which are all included in the New Testament word for grace. So grace means favor shown by a superior to an inferior. Grace means favor shown by a superior to an inferior. When there is no reason for it. No reason for it but the superior makes a choice to show the inferior grace. Indeed, it is not grace unless there is every reason not to expect it. Grace, in the New Testament, always originates from God. He is superior to all other persons. No one can compel God to be favorable to him or her. And since all men are sinners, and when I mean by sinners is living disobediently to God's word, there is no reason to expect that God should favor anyone. So everything outside of hell, that is which is the only thing we really earn, comes to us from God's gracious hand. Everything outside of hell, because a sinner is actually destroyed on the journey to hell. But because of God's grace, he diverts us. So I see everything outside of hell. That is which uh, is the only thing we really earn comes to us from God's gracious kindness. Paul uses the word grace in this sense. In Galatians 1 3, he says, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians 2 21. 
I do not set aside the grace of God, for him righteousness will be great in the world. Christ died for nothing. Galatians 6 18. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you as spirit, brothers. Amen. Grace also means the work that God does in changing men and women. God does this work through Jesus Christ. Grace is the force of God's love. And the grace actually affects the people. Paul uses this word in this sense. In Galatians 1 6, he says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you by the grace of Christ and attending to a different gospel. And also 5 uh, 1 15.
Be with us now 